YouTube, what is good? Today we are talking about finding your own unique photo editing style. Now this is a question I get all the time, either in the comments on these videos or in my DMs on Instagram. People see my Instagram feed, they look at my photos and they ask, how can I get my photos to have a consistent theme like yours? It seems like all your photos kind of have the same general vibe, the same general feeling. How can I accomplish that with my photography? So that is what we are breaking down today. I was thinking about this question last night and I thought back to the last few years of me kind of developing my own style, how my style has changed, and I'm bringing that information to you. Everything we're talking about today is based on my own real life experience, building and creating my editing style over the last few years. So before we get going, there is one thing I wanna be very clear about before we start the video. An editing style, a photography style, is not a requirement for enjoying photography. If you're just getting into photography or it's something you do for fun, don't feel like you have to stick to one particular style. Create whatever makes you happy. This video is intended for anyone who has asked me about this particular question. And I think as artists, as you grow in a particular medium, no matter what it is, music, drawing, painting, photography, you want your art to eventually reflect more of you and have more of a consistent theme to it. And I think that's why I get this question so often. So I just wanted to say that before we get started, I didn't want to single anyone out. It is completely fine if your photography is just about creating whatever it is you want to make and you're just having fun with it. And editing style is not a requirement of photography. But let's get into these tips. If you enjoy the video, do me a solid hit that thumbs up button and make sure you subscribe for more videos. Let's get into it. Now the first thing we're talking about is the most simple and for whatever reason the most difficult for people to do and that is sit down, take time and just create something. Try to bring whatever creative vision you have in your head to life. Before I had my own house, before I lived here, when I lived with my parents, I would spend hours every single day just in front of Lightroom editing photo after photo after photo trying to create something that I liked something that I was happy with just trying to have an idea stick there were some days in the summer where I would spend five hours just in front of the computer obsessing over photos and editing and I realized that time is not a luxury that everyone has not everyone can be a 20 year old in their parents house editing all day like a crazy person but the point the key takeaway is just try to find some time in your week to sit down and and bring whatever creative vision you have to life. Take some time and make something. A good metaphor for this is someone who says they wanna get bigger muscles, they wanna get stronger, and they're complaining about not seeing results, but they're only going to the gym one time a week. You have to put in the time if you wanna get the result you're looking for. And so you took my advice, you just spent two hours editing a photo in Lightroom, and you got it to a point that you really like. You like the style of this particular image. That leads us into tip number two, which is creating your own presets. So once you have a photo, you have an edit that you like in Lightroom, you can go to develop, new preset, and you can save a preset with all of those settings on that particular edit. And here's why presets are so great. They allow you, like I just said, to save different parts of each edit so you can apply them to future photos. So let's say tomorrow you sit back down at the computer, you wanna edit another image. You can apply the settings from this photo that you edited tonight to tomorrow's photo to start as a baseline. And this is great because you can develop consistencies in your work over time. But it's important to remember that presets are not one size fits all. The preset we made for this photo, it might look great right here, but there may be some things we have to adjust when we apply it to another photo. Another great thing about your own presets is if you use one on a photo and you really start making some changes to that preset, you can always save it as a new preset and start working off of that one. If you looked at my Lightroom catalog right now, now there are so many presets from the last few years of editing and each one has kind of led into the next one. I might create a preset that I like, work with that for a little while and then start tweaking it and making some changes to it, save that as a new preset, use that for a while, make some changes, tweak that. All these small tweaks and changes have led my editing style to where it's at now. Creating your own presets and using them and tweaking them over time is a great way to allow your editing style to organically develop. So very briefly, the third thing I wanna talk about involves the equipment that you're using. It's important to remember that different pieces of equipment can yield slightly different results. I talked about this in the last vlog. When I'm making photos with this Fuji camera right here or with this Fuji lens, the photos might edit slightly differently or a lot differently than photos made on a different lens or on a different camera. And that's something important to be aware of. Like my Sigma 35 millimeter lens, it's a little bit more contrasty, it's a little bit more punchy in certain areas than 
my Nikon 14 to 24. And when I'm editing these photos from different lenses and different files, I'm aware of that. And I try to adjust each edit accordingly to get some type of consistency so they all look similar. It's like I said a minute ago, presets are not one size fits all. So putting presets on different file types and photos shot on different lenses can potentially yield different results. And it's on you as the editor to be aware of this and make the proper changes so you can get that consistency that you're going for. So the fourth thing I wanna talk about is taking advantage of all the resources you have now as a photographer. If you have a question, you're trying to figure something out about editing, or you get inspired and you're trying to learn a new technique, take advantage of all the information you have at your fingertips. There was a time where the only way to learn photography was through another person or going to school. Now you have the luxury of YouTube channels like this one, all the great content on YouTube, all the great photography websites out there. If you run into a speed bump or you can't figure something out or you're having a problem or you're stuck, I guarantee if you just go out there and you look for the answer, you will find it. I was just talking about this the other day. I'm trying out this new camera. I'm trying to get a hang of it. I spent about four hours yesterday Yesterday, just watching different videos about that camera, different things, the settings, different things I can do with the video footage. And all that information was completely free and it was available to everyone. So make sure you're taking advantage of what's out there. All right, so we are on to the fifth, the final tip that I want to talk about. Everything else that we've talked about in this video hinges on this tip. And here it is. It's cliche. You hear people say this all the time, but you have to, have to, have to be yourself. Everything about creativity hinges on you being yourself. If you're not being yourself, if you're focused on copying other people, you're worried about what everyone else is doing, you're worried about what is popular, you will not be able to do any of the steps I talked about in this video. You won't be able to edit your photo to what you think is best. You won't be able to identify what you like about your own edits so you can apply them to future edits. You won't be able to pinpoint those consistencies from one photo to another and start figuring out exactly where your style lies. You won't spend your time learning what you can do to improve your photography. You'll spend your time trying to figure out what everyone else is doing, how you can mimic someone else. And that is not good. That is not how you become an artist. That is not how you find your own style. That's just how you copy somebody until eventually you give up because you can't replicate exactly what they are doing. As photographers, as creatives, as artists, as whatever you are, you are telling a unique story. You are telling life through your eyes. And everyone's story is completely different. And you know, some of the greats, some of the amazing photographers, some of the people you follow on Instagram with all the followers who you look up to, they have very interesting stories. They have amazing stories that they're able to capture and tell. And now it is on you to capture and tell your story, figure out what makes you unique, find those things that you see in your photography that make it special, and just do you. It's so important. If you look at my photography from years and years ago, you scroll down my Instagram feed, it's completely different from where it is now because over time I would do one thing, I'd get inspired by something else, I'd try this, I'd say, eh, I don't really like that, I'm gonna change this. Through all these changes in my work, one thing has stayed consistent and that is me just trying to be myself and create what I wanna create with my photos and with the way I edit them and with my style. And that's the message I wanna get across to you guys with this video. So I hope you can take the information in today's video, apply it to your life, your photography, and begin telling your story with that unique style that I know you are going for. So that's it for me, I'm gonna get out of here. If you liked the video, do me a solid, hit that thumbs up button, drop a comment, and like I said at the beginning of the video, make sure you hit that subscribe button for more photography videos like this one. I really appreciate you guys watching, y'all are the truth. It means the world to me that you support the channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you guys next time. Thank you.